What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be uh, showing you the best way to import your Revit models into Twinmotion or the smart way to do that. Uh, now if you don't know what Twinmotion is, uh, I suggest you check out this video that they have created. I'm going to include it up in the cards and then also in the description below the video. Uh, now that's just a kind of a little overview video of what Twinmotion is. Uh, it's basically a real-time rendering uh, software which you can use with uh, numerous different uh, modeling software. Uh, in this case we're obviously going to be using Revit because this is a Revit channel but you can use others obviously. Uh, and then it allows you to add elements to that model to make it look more realistic. Uh, you can add materials and much much more. Uh, in the end you can export uh, either animations, renderings, uh, VR, uh, so uh, it has many different outputs and uh, it's, uh, it's really amazing when it comes to creating uh, something that looks uh, realistic uh, really quickly and easily. Uh, now, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to be showing you, or in this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to export your Revit model uh, and uh, load it into Twinmotion. And I'm going to be showing you the smart way to do so uh, by using the uh, da DataSmith uh, plugin. Uh, now, this plugin allows you to create a live link, so to speak. So what this is, uh, it's basically uh, a link between your Revit model uh, or your Revit project and your Twinmotion project. Project. And once you load the, the project with this link, it's live. So any changes that you make to your Revit project, those changes will be transferred then to the Twinmotion project. So you can kind of work on both uh, at the same time. Uh, which is really useful. You can make progress on the kind of the twin motion part, but if you have to make some changes in Revit, you can always go back to Revit and then just synchronize the model. It's just one quick click and you're done. Uh, all of the changes has, have been transferred into twin motion. Uh, now, for uh, this video, I'm just going to be showing you kind of the whole process and also how to load in uh, multiple uh, models. So you can have multiple Revit projects and you can have them running uh, in uh, twin motion. So just in one twin motion project, you can have multiple Revit models, which is really useful when you have these big projects where you have multiple people working on different segments of the project. You can bring it all uh, together in twin motion for the kind of the presentation side uh, of that uh, project. Uh, now, full disclosure, this video is uh, sponsored by Twinmotion. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell, tell you do, should you get it or not. I'm just going to be showing you some of the features and how it works and then obviously you make the decision on your own. Uh, now, uh, what I'm going to be doing uh, now is just quickly jumping into Revit and then I'm going to be showing you how to use the DataSmith plugin. Uh, but before that, uh, first we have to cover, well, how, you do, how do you get it? Uh, well, you can actually get it quite easily by following the link, which I'm going to include again in the cards above and also in the description just below this video. You go there, you download the, the plugin, you install it. It's a very simple installation process just kind of a few clicks, uh, you hit finish and you're done. You have your DataSmith plugin and then that appears in Revit. So let's go to Revit and let's see what that looks like. Uh, now here on my screen you can see that they have a Revit project, uh, project opened up. And uh, here on the ribbon, we're currently on the architecture tab, but when we install uh, the DataSmith plugin, here we're going to get that DataSmith tab. Uh, now this uh, just has a few tools here that you can make and it has this connections option and let's let me just drag this over it opened up on my on my sec second screen so here it says no connection found uh, the reason for this is because first you have to go into twin motion and kind of tell twin motion to search for Revit projects and then you can connect your Revit project uh, so for that uh, let's just quickly open up twin motion here as you can see now we're in twin motion and uh, then uh, let's go here to the import uh, part or import section and click on the import button. Uh, now here you have uh, the option to import geometry. Now this is something that they've covered in that first video, so we're not going to be going over this. We're going to be talking about the direct link, which is just over here. Uh, so here, as you can see, we have uh, 
and the project that has been opened up uh, currently uh, here we have the option to uh, collapse it either by material or keep a hierarchy or collapse all now in this case I'm just going to keep it at collapse by material for this phase and then I'm just going to click OK and it's going to appear over here as you can see Revit and then here we have that project uh, now if I go back into Revit and now if I find connections Let's drag this over again. Uh, here we here we go. Now here we have this uh, twin motion connection. So it is connected. So now I can just click synchronize. Wait for a few moments. It's now sending or synchronizing that model into twin motion uh, or with twin motion. And then if I go back here into twin motion, uh, if I just look around, here it is. It's kind of hard to see it first because we're kind of standing directly above that uh, but if we look at it like this as you can see here we have that uh, house in uh, twin motion just loaded in uh, now uh, I'm just going to look around a little bit perhaps select that house orbit around yeah there we go uh, now uh, if you have uh, watched my previous video I have shown you how to use that kind of quick uh, uh, quick approach to uh, loading your model in we didn't use the uh, data Smith plugin uh, well in that case the model appeared completely orange and it looked really weird uh, now in this case as you can see well we don't have those issues so the model looks exactly how it should look and I'm quite happy with that also something that uh uh, that uh, when you use the data Smith plugin something that happens uh, is that it accepts uh, the uh, material uh, the glass material from Revit and then it converts it to the kind of the, the the higher quality twin motion glass material which is really really useful so now we have that model loaded in obviously you can make some changes or adjustments if you want to make some adjustments to that model in this case I don't want to do that so I'm not going to be making any changes right now uh, but now it's time to load in a secondary uh, a, a secondary Revit project so we can do that by going uh, back here into Revit and as you can see here I have this second model opened up so this is actually the surroundings uh, for our house the house is supposed to go right in here in the center and then here we have a little pool in the backyard we have a little patio we have some trees a road here and so on so this is something that I uh, I want to use for the surroundings for uh, my model and let's say that we had perhaps a separate person or a, some somebody else uh, modeling this while I worked on the house which is something that's really common uh, in uh, in large companies where when they're working on large projects uh, so what I'm going to do here is just go to this model uh, and then uh, let's go to the data smith again when we go to connections it's just going to say that no uh, no connection found at the moment but if we go back into twin motion here we can go to import uh, import direct link uh, here we can find the Revit terrain which is now the current opened uh, up project uh, now this one I'm going to collapse uh, by uh, hierarchy not by material and then I'm just going to click OK and as you can see now we have uh, that uh, project uh, linked up now obviously we have to go back into Revit again go to the synchronize button and then synchronize that wait for a few moments for the synchronization go back to twin motion and now this is what we have as you can see it's really exciting because it has loaded in the whole model we have the Revit trees if I just uh, orbit around let's see perhaps if I could select the house here okay here we have the pool in the backyard now I can select the pool here I can bring up the materials for example find materials uh, find let's see can we find some water okay here we go here we have some water and we have multiple different waters but let's use the pool water and then assign that and I can assign that and now as you can see we have water and it's actually kind of moving around a little bit yeah it just depends on the on the angle I guess but as you can see here it kind of has just a, a little bit of movement just to make everything look nicer 
Uh, now, something else that I wanted to show you, something that you can do when you load uh, models in like this, uh, is the option to actually exchange uh, existing Revit families or uh, model elements from Revit for uh, different uh, twin motion elements. So let me show you how that works. Uh, here, as you can see, we have many of these trees. And for this, uh, you do have to use the collapse, by, uh, the, the, the collapse by category. So you cannot use collapse by material. So just keep that uh, in mind. Uh, luckily, we did already set up the surroundings uh, as uh, uh, just categorized by components. So now I can just come in here and I can just select these trees. And uh, once you select them uh, here in the upper corner, uh, upper right corner, uh, you can see that here we have kind of the categorization of all of the elements. So if I select one of these, as you can see, it's just going to appear there. So we have these kind of planting categories and we have multiple uh, trees here. So if I select this, it's we can just kind of analyze where are all of those trees. So we have that one, that one, yeah. So those are kind of all of the all of the included trees. So what we can do is just select all of these. So just all of the all of the, the, the trees that pop up. So let's see here if we can find all of them. Okay. I'm just holding the control key to add to selection. And I think we have almost all of them. There we go. Okay, so uh, once you have selected all of them, you can just right click uh, on uh, one of these and then you have the replace object function. So once you click on the replace object uh, function, uh, then what happens uh, is you have this ability to drop uh, new trees in here. So you just go here, uh, let's go back, uh, back to materials. Okay, here we have uh, vegetation and landscape. So let's choose that, let's choose trees. And then you can choose multiple different trees. So I can go with, I don't know, let's drop this one here. And then you can just choose kind of a variety of, of different trees that might look good there. So okay, this looks too large. Okay, this looks nice. Perhaps this one. And then let's, I don't know, let's include this one as well. Uh, so we have these four trees and then I'm just going to go here to start a uh, replacement. And then as you can see, what it is going to do is just, it's going to replace those trees. Now it looks a little bit odd uh, right now. I think we need to uh, increase the age or the scale uh, if you're coming kind of from modeling software. So I'm just going to drag this out and as you can see, it's going to make those trees uh, much larger. And of course, if you're not happy with some of the trees, uh, how they've been uh, kind of set up, you can always select the tree. So for example, this one in the back here, I wanted that to be a little bit larger or uh, a different tree. So uh, what they can do is just uh, select that one. Uh, let's see, so that's this one here. And then I can uh, replace that object with something else. So let's see, let's use something different, perhaps this tree. And then let's replace that one. Okay, it's a bit larger. Let's increase its age. There we go. Uh, so you can play around like that. You can take Revit, existing Revit elements, and then you can, uh, or, and then you can replace them uh, with twin motion elements, which obviously look much more realistic. I mean, these trees now look quite amazing. Uh, and there is also one little trick with these uh, twin motion trees, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and that is if you go here to uh, let's see to the settings and here for the location lighting and so on. So for the weather, uh, we have the ability to set up the season. So as you can see, uh, it can be winter, it can be autumn, summer and so on. So you can play around with that. And as you can see, the trees will actually change color uh, according to your settings. So you can uh, you can kind of use this slider in order to get some perhaps some autumn colors or something like that. So if you want to change that, that works. And this is something that you definitely couldn't do with uh, a regular uh, Revit uh, trees. Uh, now also uh, when it comes to using the uh, uh, using this smart link function uh, or uh, or just the live link 
function. Uh, it's the ability to update the model. So for example, in this case, uh, I have this whole driveway where you can kind of uh, enter the garage, but they don't really have anything to kind of come to the entrance of the building or the house, which is, as you can see here, is the door. Uh, so uh, I can actually go back to the Revit model and I can update that. Uh, so I can go back here if I just open up uh, Revit back up and, and then here I can just take a look at what this looks like here. Uh, if I select this, uh, this is topography, this is just kind of a uh, surface that has been kind of a, a subsurface and then I can just use lines and then I can kind of uh, do something like this. Let's see, let's just create a little a little walkway towards the entrance. I think this looks good enough. Uh, then let's go to the uh, split element tool. SL is the shortcut, split here. And then I'm just going to use trim and extend to corner to fix that up. Okay, so once I've done this, I can uh, hit finish. And now just because I have made the change, if I go back here into twin motion, you can see that nothing really has changed here. Uh, well, the reason for that is uh, obviously we do have to update or synchronize the model. Uh, so we go back here into Revit, we go to Datasmith uh, tab, uh, we go to Synchronize, we just click on that and that synchronizes the model. So now if I go back into Twin Motion, as you can see, it's going to look like this and now we do have that uh, kind of uh, uh, just a little uh, walkway up to the door so you don't have to walk on grass, which does make some sense. And there we go. That's how you can use the Datasmith uh, plugin for Revit in order to create this live link between Revit and Twinmotion. And it will kind of unlock all of these cool new features uh, and abilities that you didn't have if you used kind of the uh, more simpler uh, way of exporting from Revit into Twinmotion. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope you like these uh, Twinmotion videos. Uh, I did get a lot of positive comments and feedback for the last one so I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video as well. Uh, now if you want to get Twin Motion, you can actually find it by following the link just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards I'm going to be leaving uh, a link as well. You can get like a free trial version and test it out for yourself. Uh, now um, for the next video for Twin Motion, I'm planning uh, to create a video where I'm going to be showing you how to create this uh, really cool animation for your uh, Revit model. So just show you how to uh, animate Revit models, create some, uh, well, video, or, because, well, video is always better than pictures. Uh, at least that's what I believe, and that's why I'm on, here on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe. Not only does it help me out a lot and it helps you not miss any of my future videos, but more importantly, it makes the alpaca happy, and that's why we're all here. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.